All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Karen August, Next Generation Trust Services. Welcome to our webinar. We're so pleased to have Aaron Fragnito from People's Capital Group. Um, he's going to be giving a self-directed IRA into your real estate presentation with an actual case study. We did have, we do have um, a common client has a self-directed IRA with us and then used it to invest with People's Capital Group. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, if you have questions during the presentation, Aaron is going to start um, the webinar with his presentation. But if you do have questions while he's going through his presentation, you can either type them in the question box if you're on a computer or the chat window, or just write them down, and then um, Aaron will address questions at the end of his presentation. Then I have a short little presentation. Um, and same thing, type them in the chat box, in the question box, or hold them until the end, and then you know we'll have a open Q&A at the end. So without further ado, Aaron, take it away. All right. Thanks a lot, Karen. And uh, so my name is Aaron Fragnito. I'm co-owner of People's Capital Group. My other partner, Seth Martinez, owns the other half. And we've been in business for about four years now. I'll go over a little bit of information on our, our company here just to tell you about ourselves. Um, so People's Capital Group, we own about uh, 40 properties all in New Jersey. We are New Jersey based. Most of our properties are in Essex County. We're very active in Newark and East Orange, multifamilies, but we also have million dollar flips going on in Morristown and uh, South Orange and Maplewood and actually we're going to focus on a million dollar flip in uh, Morristown today. That's our case study uh, tonight because uh, honestly those million dollar properties are even are more fun, but <laughs> the ROI on the smaller stuff is even better. Uh, we'll get into that later. So we work with about $2.7 million in private uh, investor funds. A lot of that is self-directed IRA funds, over so about 20 to 25 different investors. And of course, we've always hit our uh, preferred rate of return that we're trying to achieve in every investment every single time. Uh, we have a real estate networking event in, uh, called uh, North Jersey Real Estate Network that meets in Morristown on the third Tuesday of the month. We get about 50 to 60 investors out there. Great place to build your business, meet guys that are doing a deal a week like me or people just getting started or somewhere in the middle. Uh, we have our own management company that manages our 95 apartments. And we also do coaching, uh, investment coaching and education. We have a seminar actually coming up on Saturday. So we're very active in the education part of the business too, and about a million dollars in rent roll uh, coming in a year between all of our properties. So why self-direct your IRA? So uh, as you can see, you can uh, sometimes make better returns in, in real estate or other types of investments uh, as opposed to just riding the S&P 500 or some type of index stock, which is a more common place for IRAs to, uh, to sit. Uh, take reti control of your retirement account, actually put it into something that is tangible, that you can show your friends and family, your spouse, and say, hey, look at that big house. I own a piece of that. Isn't that pretty cool? You can actually walk inside and, and uh, ring the doorbell and, and enjoy uh, the home. Of course, you can't live there, but it is a cool way to show your tangibility of your investment. Uh, diversify your investments. You don't want to just be tied up in bonds or stocks. We all know how, how uh, volatile that can be. And of course, it's good to diversify. Uh, build cash flow. If you're structured the right way with uh, properties, you can also, in some cases, collect cash flow on properties as well. And of course, uh, who doesn't love mailbox money? Uh, tax depreciation. Uh, that's a little bit more complicated having an IRA, so I won't get into a lot of depth there, but there are some tax uh, depreciation opportunities in owning real estate, even with your IRA account. And of course, being the owner of, of the real estate, you uh, get a ton of tax write-offs. Uh, that's one of the hugest benefits of owning real estate in our end. That's why we do the multifamily holds where we get a lot of tax write-offs. And then we have the flips where we get nailed by the tax man, but those two counter each other. So at the end of the year, Seth and I really don't pay a whole lot of tax. We structure our business just for that purpose. And it is really cool when you work the tax system in your favor and you pay less tax the right way. It's a great feeling. Uh, so, you, you know, by doing that, by self-directing your IRA, you're able to avoid the volatility and the fees of the stock market. Often, uh, working with guys like me, we don't have any fees or anything like that when you're moving your money into our account. 
and of course self-directing your IRA, there the fees on that are very very small compared to what uh, fees are usually in the stock market or other uh, traders and, and uh, financial advisors. So you want to take a, take note of what the fees are and, and the difference, the money you can save by self-directing your IRA, especially when self-directing it into an LLC. Okay, if you self-direct your IRA account into an LLC that you own with the proper operating agreement, okay, then you don't have to move it back and forth to the custodian every time and pay a fee. That's the benefit of it, of course. Uh, but what, before we get into that, what can you self-direct your IRA into? Okay, an LLC you own with the proper operating agreement is something you can definitely self-direct your IRA into. The LLC operating agreement will outline things you can and cannot do with that capital. Uh, real estate with a non-recourse loan. Now, unfortunately, as Karen and I were just discussing, I, I don't really know many non-recourse loan banks. Karen's having a webinar in, a, I think, a few days uh, that does go over this, and she could talk more about that. So that's very exciting, and that is an opportunity where you can ideally, I, from what I understand, uh, self-direct your IRA into a piece of real estate that does not have a recourse loan, which is very hard to find. So Karen will explain more about that later, which is very cool. Um, a personal promissory note from a non-direct family member, okay? That's how we borrow capital often. Seth and I will sign a promissory note, very extensive 12-page promissory note with all of our personal information in there. We personally guarantee it, uh, and that's some a way you can lend your money to others, and that's how you can protect yourself as well, and how the borrower can also have a, a clear understanding of the terms of the note and everything and the ramifications for not paying that money back properly. Uh, real estate, of course, if you don't live in it or a direct family member, you can't buy a house for your, your, your wife or you can't buy a house for your, your uh, uncle, but there are some in, in ways you can buy real estate with your self-directed IRA account. Private equity companies and investing in uh, small companies and things like that, and of course, hoping that their value rises over time, maybe a technology or a product or service that you believe in or you have some uh, information that is going to be taking off, and that is something you can uh, self-direct your IRA into, of course, if you don't own the company, of course, and non-publicly traded stocks and bonds. Okay, Again, you cannot be affiliated with those stocks or bonds, but if they're non-publicly traded, you can self-direct your IRA into them. But today we're going to focus on real estate, of course. Um, so self-directed IRA restrictions, okay? Um, to most family members, you cannot lend this money to. Uh, your brother and sister are okay. Okay, those are two. Your direct uh, siblings are okay to lend your money to. Whether you want to do that or not, of course, is up to you. Uh, custodian uh, is required to facilitate um, the uh, transaction. Uh, of course, that's uh, what Karen and Next Generation Trust can do for you. Uh, that is the law. They have to be the custodian. They have to. Uh, you have to work with a company that's licensed to do this. Uh, and of course, there is a small fee involved, but the fee is much smaller than generally moving that money into uh, other stocks or things like that. So, custodian cannot be affiliated with the investment. Okay, you can't be going in with Karen on an awesome real estate investment uh, because, of course, she'd be wearing too many hats in that case. So, it has to be a separate investment opportunity. Uh, cannot self-direct from uh, pers for personal expenses. You can't self-direct to your account and go buy groceries for the week. Uh, IRA custodian must be the manager of your self-directed IRA LLC. Okay, we'll get into more detail with that in a second here. So in this case, you self-direct the funds um, into an LLC that you own, but Next Generation Trust would be the manager of that LLC. Okay, you can own the LLC, but you can't manage that LLC. That's the rules. So let's go over case study. It's easier to understand these things. We talk about them in, in real life. This is a real investment with accurate information about uh, what one of uh, uh, my clients, uh, one of our investors in our network, uh, just invested in one of our deals. So John approached, we changed the names, of course. John approaches PCG to learn more about real estate investing. Maybe one of our networking events, our seminars, or just sees us online, or who knows? There's a million ways we can meet. you can meet us. We're out there in all of our social media and everything. So PCG gives John an operating agreement for his attorney to review that allows him to create an LLC that will hold his self-directed IRA funds. Okay? 
We'll give you this operating agreement for free. It costs us a few thousand dollars, but it's something that you know is very, very necessary and important for you to uh, have in place to allow you to have this LLC that you can self-direct your money into. So we know by giving you this operating agreement, which has been reviewed by dozens of attorneys and been run through the ringer a million times and should pass your attorney's inspection, will help you skip a step, uh, ideally having your attorney write up a whole operating agreement for this and there's a good chance that attorney might not even know exactly how to write that operating agreement. So it's important we have the right document in place. It is a very expensive document. It is a legal document. We can give you a clear and editable uh, copy of it so that your attorney can edit it for his liking and input your details and numbers and maybe on this transaction or maybe on another. Okay, Maybe it's even something that you decide to not invest in people's capital group. And of course, you can use that forever and whatever you want to self-direct your IRA into an LLC that you own but don't control. Uh, the operating agreement uh, outlines what John can and cannot do with his IRA funds. That's really the purpose of it, to outline that and allow him to uh, move his capital uh, legally into this LLC. Okay. Uh, so case study, John self-directs his IRA into real estate investment here. We're continuing in the next slide. PCG shows John a couple of upcoming uh, and current real estate investments. So we call this the Grand Tour. I can take you around to million dollar homes in, in North Jersey. I can take you to uh, a bunch of multifamily properties in, in Newark or East Orange. We have a lot of Section 8 housing, which is very uh, lucrative when done properly. Um, there are some challenges to it for sure, but uh, if you own your own management company, you have enough uh, Section 8 housing, it can really be a cash cow. So that's something we do try to focus on. We buy foreclosure properties. We fix them up with private investor funds. We lease them out and we go to refinance. Once we refinance, we pay back the investor. That's the buy, renovate, refinance method. That's how we've accumulated about 30 income properties over the last three years. Uh, we also flip houses, which I'm sure you're familiar with. We've seen the TV shows. You buy, you fix them up, you put them back on the market with the best realtor in town. You, you try and make a million bucks in the middle, and you're lucky if you squeeze out 30. So uh, we, of course, flip houses as well. We flip about 12 to 15 houses a year. Again, some small, some big, really depends on the deal. Right now, we're actually focusing on smaller flips, uh, less capital intensive, uh, less time invested, less risk and generally still a very solid return, very good ROI, a better ROI in Newark than we find in Morristown. Just a little internal piece of information there in our business. Again, we actually make a better ROI flipping houses in Newark than we do in the nicest areas of New Jersey, like Morristown, you know, Maplewood, Chatham. Uh, we've done a lot of deals there, and it is hard to make money there. You tend to pay more for the real estate. You tend to pay a lot more to renovate it and you're paying a lot more in holding costs and you're just dealing with a different level of contractor and township and a lot more challenges with the township and the architect and the contractors and the level of construction in that business. So we actually focus on smaller investments. But I don't want to get off topic here, go too much into my business. The focus here is John and John has now looked at a couple of our real estate investments and he says, okay, you know what Aaron, I like the 519 Jockey Hollow Road in Morristown, that thing is awesome, it's a million dollar home and I live down the street so I can go drive by it and show it off to my wife and she'll be really impressed. So PCG gives John uh, borrow references, uh, real estate own schedule, okay, uh, people we borrow money from of course, currently borrow money from, uh, real estate own schedules, all of our real estate owns, you see all of our equity, you know how much equity we have in that real estate, okay, that's important, whenever you're investing in a real estate company, understand how much equity they have, because basically that is plan B, okay, your equity there, you sell real estate if you have losses to cover those losses, of course, so understand the equity real estate companies have, we have about two to three million dollars in equity with our properties. Uh, real estate owned schedule and of course investment due diligence package. Okay, we'll give that all to John in this case. He's picked out 519 Jockey Hollow Road in Morristown, so we gave him the references, the the real estate we own, and the all the information about the specific property itself, the specific uh, investment. Okay, the tank scan, the appraisal, whatever he'd like to take a look at, the project spreadsheet, scope of work. Okay. Uh, John agrees to lend to 519 Jockey Hollow Road, the minimum investment amount of 30000 Okay, 
Some of our investors invest the minimum of 30000 Others invest up over a million dollars. It depends, of course, on the investor and, and uh, what their position is, of course. Um, in this case, John, getting started with us, agreed to invest the minimum amount. Uh, one of our, um, one of our, part of our brand is that we put out that we make real estate um, easily attainable. A lot of companies say you have to have 50000 or 100000 or 500000 to invest in a deal with them. In this case, we bring, brought it down to $30,000, which is a low investment amount for real estate and it's a low entry level investment amount. So we make real estate accessible by having that $30,000 minimum investment amount. It's, it's lower than a lot of our competition and we put it there. It is a bit of a headache sometimes having a lot of investors at a lower amount, but we have a very good system, a very good staff, and we're able to, of course, handle work with multiple investors and make sure everything is handled properly. Uh, so PCG sends John's attorney an extensive promissory note at this time, personally guaranteeing the principal interest that's that 12-page uh, promissory note with another two-page personal guarantee in it. And that is a very uh, in-depth legal document that throws Seth and I under the bus completely and protects the lender. Uh, it throws all the risk to the borrower. Uh, we personally guarantee this money because, quite frankly, uh, we, we say, well, we're going to pay, no matter what, if the deal loses money, uh, we're going to pay you back. If the market drops out, we're going to pay you back. If, if some, something terrible happens in the business, we're going to pay you back. It's personally guaranteed. And we're not afraid to personally guarantee it because even if it wasn't personally guaranteed, I'd still pay you back because a good businessman, someone with integrity, someone who has a good uh, reputation, makes sure, of course, everyone gets paid exactly what they think they are going to make on the investments and their personal, on their uh, principal and their interest. So we don't mind personally guaranteeing investments. It's very important that other investors do that as well because if you're not personally guaranteeing it, then you're really not on the hook for that money. And that's an important question to ask someone before you lend money to them. The terms of uh, our capital that we borrow uh, is 10% APR, annual percentage rate, okay? And interest accrues, one year loan or paid back upon the sale of the property, okay? So that means the, we don't pay you monthly or quarterly. The interest actually accrued in this case, okay? In some cases, we do pay quarterly on different types of loans. So we can talk about that um, at another time. But in this case, we did the, uh, the interest accrued. That means we pay the principal and interest all in one uh, payment at once the property was sold. John hires Next Generation Trust Services to be the custodian of his IRA. Okay, so uh, at this point now, John has uh, looked into our business. He's looked into our our past with borrowing capital. He's looked into this specific real estate investment opportunity, the specific property, uh, with all of the information we've given him. Everything looks good. He's uh, had his attorney review the promissory note we sent him for the specific property. He's had his attorney review the operating agreement we've sent him for uh, opening up an LLC that he can self-direct his IRA funds into. So now John's ready to, um, to make some moves. And at this point, John hires Next Generation Trust Services to be the custodian of his IRA. Uh, John sets up a, a trust account with uh, Next Generation uh, Trust Services, and John wires Next Generation Trust the $30,000 from his IRA that he's looking to invest in our property. John then starts John Doe IRA LLC. You can call this LLC whatever you'd like. Okay, in this case, he just named it after himself, IRA LLC. The LLC operating agreement allows Next Generation to manage the LLC, while John owns 100% of the LLC, okay? Now, this doesn't mean Karen's gonna have a checkbook for your account, okay? This doesn't mean Next Generation Trust is gonna be able to go out and buy stock in Apple tomorrow because they think Apple's undervalued, which is not. Uh, and I, in this case, you actually do control where the capital goes to. Um, however, Karen, or I'm sorry, Next Generation Trust is the custodian of the LLC, is the manager of the LLC, okay? But of course, they oversee where the capital goes to, but at the end of the day, they don't really have the say on um, what you could do with that capital. You actually are you do control that capital, it is your capital, but they are managing the account. So there are restrictions on what you can do 
they have to, uh, you have to talk to Next Generation to make sure you are following the rules, and they're there to make sure you follow the rules and stop you from breaking the rules, because if you do break the rules, you may have some serious tax consequences down the road. So Next Generation Trust is there to help you, guide you, protect you from hurting yourself or hurting the, the people you're lending to, and of course, lining yourself up for any uh, uh, tax complications down the road. So uh, talk to Karen more about that. She can explain it in more depth, but it's a little complicated because technically they're the manager, you're the owner, it's your money, you're kind of guiding where the capital will go to, but at the same time, next generation has to be involved every uh, step of the way to make sure that it's done properly. And it's important to have them there. Without them, you're prone uh, to make mistakes. Next Generation approves the LLC operating agreement. Okay, they're going to look through it as well, okay, because again, they're managing the LLC, so they're going to have to look at that operating agreement and uh, make sure it is uh, up to date and uh, up to code and wires the uh, $30,000 into the LLC account at that time. So now Next Generation's approved the LLC operating agreement, so John's going to go ahead and wire that uh, $30,000 into the LLC account, okay. PCG signs the promissory note at this time. Seth and I will then sign that note. Okay, we'll personally guarantee John's principal and interest. And at that point, uh, John is ready to then lend his capital to us. Okay, and he can wire that thirty thousand dollars into five nineteen Jockley Hollow Road LLC, which of course is the property address LLC. That capital can be used to then renovate that property and of course put it back on the market. Okay, so what happened there was. John had the money in his IRA account. He hired Next Generation Trust to be his custodian. He moved the money into Next Generation Trust's trust account. Next Generation Trust reviewed the operating agreement for John Doe IRA LLC. They approved it. John Doe's attorney approved it. And then John went ahead and wired that money into his LLC. At that point, the capital uh, cleared in his LLC account, and he could then wire it to 519 Jockey Hollow Road once we sign that promissory note. So there's a couple movements of cash, the IRA to the custodian to the LLC to the borrower. Okay, that's four uh, different accounts, of course, we're moving through. Okay. PCG uses the $30,000 to renovate 519 Jock Cal Road. Okay, there are restrictions on what we can do with that money. Uh, just like how you can't go out and buy groceries, I can't go out and buy groceries with either, but for different reasons, because I signed a promissory note that says I'm going to use this to renovate and, and, and pay the operating costs of 519 Jockey Hollow Road. So this $30,000 may be used to, to uh, put on a new deck or put on a new roof, finish the kitchen, uh, pay the mortgage payment, pay the, the heating bill, the, the tax bill, the property tax. Okay, operating costs and renovation costs is what the funds will be used for. That's what they can only be used for. I'm not, uh, I'm not allowed to use it for rent or for uh, my payroll every uh, two weeks. Okay, I, I can only use it for that specific investment. That's what the promissory note outlines. <clears throat> uh, PCG lists the property uh, with the best realtor in town, creating a bidding war on the resale. Property is sold and John has paid back his principal in an in interest in eight months. Uh, PCG then has another investment opportunity with the same terms. Okay. Now listen guys, I want to have a little disclosure here, full disclosure. Um, Karen and I wanted to focus on this particular client, okay, who by the way is not named John, just to clarify. And uh, in this case, 519 Jockey Hollow Road, you can Google it, it is actually on the market, we just listed it. Okay, um, I, I've done this with dozens of other investors, but in this particular situation, I wanted to use a current property, a current investor. This particular investor has about $200,000 with us. This is one of four properties uh, he's invested in. So, you know, in this case, uh, we've worked with his capital uh, for some time now. This is just his current property he's invested in. But in, in all honesty, it did just hit the market. We do have a lot of interest in it. Uh, we just had an open house, um, and we do hope to get some offers very shortly. So we, we flip about a property a month or two, but I just wanted to focus on this one right here, and you'll see it uh, hopefully get sold very shortly. So uh, at that point, the property sells you some pictures of 519 Jockey Hollow Road. Okay, uh, It's nice, again, to be able to go to the property, see what your money is, is creating. It's very tangible. It's very attractive. Uh, and, and it's just fun to show, you know, have, have a product at the end of the day. It's, it's a lot more fun than seeing a number on a, on a stock price on a screen, you know. And uh, in my opinion, I, I think the tangibility of real estate is just uh, very enjoyable. And why not enjoy your money? Why not enjoy your investments? So, 
Um, so we also do seminars. We, we kind of kick it up a notch as well. So not only do we renovate the house and give you a lot of transparency with what we're doing with the capital, allow you to come to the property and kind of see how we do it. You can even see how we manage our contractors. You can shadow us around the house at times. And that, that stuff is all free. So that's the thing that those uh, situations, shadowing real estate investors, learning how to fix houses, to flip houses, that's normally thousands and thousands of dollars. If you went to Than Merrill and asked him if you could shadow him for the day, he'd laugh. Or you know, any other investor, it would be a lot of money. So we, we try to work with our investors and, and really, of course, sweeten the, the pot by offering an opportunity to come out of the property to see how we do this. Maybe you're interested in learning how to flip houses. Maybe you're not. Maybe you just like the, the end, end product, which is fine. Most of our investors, honestly, don't take advantage of the learn and earn program, but we call it learn and earn. Okay, that's where we, we give you a lot of the documents we work with. You're able to uh, follow us through the project at times, and you're able to, to learn and, 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 of course, earn an interest on your money. So you're investing in us. We're going to teach you how we do what we do. You're going to earn that 10% interest rate. You're going to get all of our documents, like additional operating agreements, deal analyzer spreadsheets. Uh, we have seminars, of course. Okay, this seminar is uh, $48, but it's a two-hour two and a half hour seminar. We have a breakfast included with that. It's, it's actually this uh, Saturday coming up, 10 to 12. And of course, if you're an investor, you don't have to come to this. It's just we're showing you this is how we, we really are quite transparent. Uh, we have a well-rounded local business. Uh, we, we're very active. We're not the biggest guys in town, but we are certainly a growing business with a great track record. And um, we, we like to really just wrap in the education side of the business into what we're actually doing. So in this seminar, uh, just to explain to you what, what this would uh, be about, we found uh, how we found the property, how we analyzed the challenges getting into it, how we completed the due diligence to make sure we didn't run into any issues along the way or try to predict those issues as best we can, how we selected the right and wrong contractors. We actually had a fire contractor with this project. There was a, a lot of challenges with it. And negotiated with the town and our architect. Okay, we put, up, we put on a a porch, we had to get architectural drawing, we, we uh, gutted a lot of the house, we gutted the entire house, we had to get all the drawings approved, we rearranged a lot of things, it's a very complicated process with the town, the architect, and the permits, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience, um, and we managed the construction project on a daily basis, dealt with these blasted contractors that drive us crazy sometimes, and how we pre-marketed the property to build hype and create an open house frenzy. It's very important you create that frenzy on the back end with the sale of the property. That's as, as big a part of the business as knowing how to manage a contractor. It's all part of the business. You have to know all these parts of it to do it successfully. We're not saying you come out and start flipping houses, but if you're interested in learning how we do what we do, well, here's a seminar on it. So we, uh, we try to really expose our business and with all that transparency, ideally our investors feel even more comfortable investing in us. Um, but that, that's all I have for now. Uh, again, my name is Aaron Fregnio with People's Capital Group. My uh, contact information is right up here at the top. Uh, we just uh, moved to Berkeley Heights, actually, from Warren. So our, our office is now 261 Springfield Avenue, Berkeley Heights. Uh, check us out at peoplescapitalgroup.com. And uh, like I was saying, our networking group is actually tomorrow night, uh, the third Tuesday of the month, which happens to be tomorrow night, 6 to 9, the Hyatt in Morristown. Uh, our topic is top 10... Uh, 10 Biggest Mistakes We've Made and Lessons We've Learned. I had to limit it to only 10. I didn't have enough time. So uh, it's a very fun topic. We're going to go over some situations we've been in that might make your real estate situation seem uh, easy compared to what we've been in. So um, we've learned a lot more from our mistakes than our successes, I'd say, and uh, we're going to share that with the crowd. So again, we try to be very transparent and educational and uh, have fun. We enjoy it. We always uh, try to enjoy our events and our business and our, our, our people that we work with. Um, our next seminar, like I was explaining in the last slide, is uh, November 19th. That's this Saturday from 10 to 12 at that property, 519 Jockey Hollow Road in Morristown, the property we just did a case study on, the property that uh, Karen's, uh, our contact there, is actually invested in. And uh, of course, it is a $48 seminar, but we offer uh, records of that and we're going to hand out all the information on the property. You're going to get a lot out of it. Uh, we try to price these very competitively, so it's a uh, really great uh, bang for your buck, as they say. 
Um, but we do uh, at People's Capital Group try to practice experience. You know, we have some, a lot of experience. We, uh, Seth and I, have both been in business for a number of years, not just real estate, but other businesses as well. We're both uh, entrepreneurs, having owned our own businesses in, in the past and in different industries, and then teaming up in real estate for about uh, four years now. I've done over a hundred transactions as a realtor, as a wholesaler. Uh, we wholesale about a property a week. We flip about a property a month. We also acquire about one to two multifamily properties a month, and then of course refinance the package every six to eight months. Um, and uh, by doing that, we have a good structure to our business, a very solid business plan, a uh, good reputation. You don't raise three million dollars by having a bad reputation. That's for sure, and of course we incorporate all the education and networking and, and fun and uh, experience all into uh, the business. So we try to give you a nice well-rounded package with the Learn and Earn program. And um, uh, my information's up there. If you guys have any more questions, let me open this up and see if uh, any questions were typed. But um, all right, so Karen, yeah, that's all I had for now. If you want to go ahead and, and uh, take over, I don't, I don't see any questions here. So um, yeah, go I don't ahead. see any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Aaron? You know, you can type them in the chat box or the question box. Um, no. <laughs> Maybe I did wow, such a great Aaron, job. <laughs> you did a great job. Nobody has any questions. That's that's great. Wow. Oh, what can I, say? Okay, uh, <laughs> I know the stuff like the back of my hand, Karen. You know, when you do it twelve hours a day, you're better, right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, well, if you think of any questions, even when I'm going through my short presentation, type them in the chat box. Type them in the question box. Um, we'll address them all at the end, so you still have an opportunity if you think of something. Um, my presentation is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, it's just an overview of self-directed retirement plans, so investing in non-traditional assets like with PCG. Um, you know, we'll go over a little bit of prohibited transactions. Aaron touched on that. There are things that you want to avoid when using a self-directed retirement plan. And um, then we'll have my our little case study. Um, so Next Generation Trust, we're a third-party administrator for self-directed IRAs. We're not a bank. We're not a financial planning service. We don't provide any advice. We don't endorse, recommend. We, you know, just educate our clients on the options that are available to diversify your portfolio, uh, having some real estate in a self-directed IRA. You know, if you're familiar with fixing and flipping, you know, why not diversify and have that in your self-directed retirement plan? Um, again, we don't review any merits or legitimacies of any investment. We're just a third-party administrator, and, you know, I do a lot of education. So, um, so let's get into it. A self-directed IRA allows you to invest in non-traditional assets with your retirement plan funds. Um, Self-directed IRAs have been around since the inception of IRAs. They are no different than your Fidelity Schwab IRA. Um, the investments keep your funds tax advantaged. It is an individual retirement account, so you are saving for your retirement. Um, and establishing an account with a company like us opens up a whole world of allowable investments that you can use your self-directed IRA for. Um, so these are all the types of plans that can be self-directed, your traditional IRAs, your Roth, so whether you want tax-free investing so that you don't have to worry about the taxes when you retire, or you know you just do it for tax-deferred investing. Um, most, most of the time when people retire, when they're 59 and a half or older, and they start to take their distributions out of their IRA, they're at a lower tax bracket, so it wouldn't be as much of a tax burden as it is, you know, when you're younger and you're working. Um, you can also self-direct a SEP for self-employed people. Um, those have higher contribution limits. Simple IRAs for small businesses, you can self-direct uh, solo Ks, um, defined benefit plans, you can self-direct a Coverdell education savings account, and health savings accounts for high deductible uh, health care plans. There's diff a couple different options for funding an account. You can contribute personal funds annually. 
Um, you can transfer from an existing IRA, you can roll funds from a 401k from a previous employer, or you could do a conversion so you can take a, a traditional IRA, pay the taxes on the funds, and convert it to a Roth so then you don't have to worry about the taxes at the end. Um, this is the 2016 uh, maximum contribution limit chart um, as stated by the IRS. I believe there will be only minor changes in 2017. Um, I know that the traditional and Roth maximum contributions um, up to the age of 50 or 5,500 a year. If you're 50 and older, you could do a $1,000 extra catch-up contribution. SEP for self-employed people, um, it's either 53,000 a year or 25% of your total annual compensation, whichever is less. Uh, simple for a small business is 12,500. Um, a solo K is 18,000, and you can kind of see the the rest of the contribution limits. Um, so like Aaron had touched on that there are some restrictions on investments and some prohibited transactions. Um, so you're not allowed to invest a self-directed IRA in life insurance, collectibles or antiques, rugs, alcoholic beverages, stamps, art. Some people like to collect um, old cars. That is not an investment that is allowed in a self-directed IRA. Um, but there's a whole world of uh, things that you can use a self-directed IRA to invest in. Real estate, mortgage notes, tax lien certificates, um, hedge funds, private stock. You can invest in LLCs. Um, you can, can uh, invest in oil and gas futures, precious metals, gold, silver, palladium, um, unsecured loans. There's, you know, there's the list is endless as the things that you can invest a self-directed IRA in. Um, but before you invest, it's important to establish an, a self-directed IRA, transfer funds so that you, at least you have enough for a good faith deposit on the real estate that you're looking into. Um, you know, before, you know, because you can't put a personal deposit on it and then open a self-directed IRA. And we are very familiar with real estate deadlines. Um, our processing time is two business days when we have your original signed application documents. Um, then we have to do an administrative review of the documents for what you're investing your self-directed IRA into. Um, we are not checking for legitimacy. Uh, we don't vet any investments for you. You have to do all of your own due diligence. We are just um, doing that administrative review to make sure that that asset is feasible to be held in a self-directed IRA. Um, we are you know, also trying to protect you from um, investing in a prohibited transaction and then um, the account would have to be distributed. Um, so if self-directed IRAs are something that you're interested in, you know, it's important to start that account and then, you know, get ready to move quickly on it. Um, so the IRC, so it's the IRS code 4975, um, defines a transaction with a disqualified person as a prohibited transaction and it results in a disqualification of the IRA, including taxes and penalties. So a transaction, a purchase, a sale, a lease, a loan, exchange of credit, services, goods, a disqualified person is the IRA owner, the IRA owner's spouse, the IRA owner's ascendants, which would be parents, grandparents, uh, descendants, your children and their spouses, also partners and companies that the IRA owner or any of those other disqualified people own or control 50% or more of. Um, you can't personally benefit, nor can any disqualified person personally benefit from your IRA's assets or investments. So a lot of people want to buy a vacation home, for example, in the Bahamas, um, rent it out 51 weeks a year, and then use it for the that one week. That is prohibited and, you know, could result in a disqualification of your IRA. So again, here's all the disqualified people, um, you know, IRA owner, spouse, children, spouses of children, grandchildren, their spouses, 
um, companies where you or your family above owns and controls 50% or more of. Also, if the IRA owner or any of those disqualified people are um, like on the board of directors, um, CEO, CFO, a 10% partner of a company, or they're highly compensated employees of a company um, that you're interested in investing in, um, that is also disqualified as well. But there's a whole list of non-disqualified people. Aaron touched on brothers and sisters, but there's a lot more than just that. Um, any non-family members or employees, other third-party investors, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and cousins are also non-disqualified. Um, in-laws, so your, your in-laws, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, they're non-disqualified people. And, you know, if they own or control less than 50%, of a company, they're not they're not disqualified. So I just have a little flow chart that shows um, the IRC 4975 categorizes prohibited transactions into three groups. Um, the one on the left, the per se prohibited transaction. Um, so that would be if you own a rental property in your personal name and you want to purchase the property from yourself using your self-directed IRA, that is prohibited. Uh, the middle section, the extension of credit, um, so you are unable to get a standard mortgage for a property that's owned by a self-directed IRA because with a standard mortgage you have to personally guarantee that loan. Um, you can get a non-recourse loan to leverage that property. There are two banks in the United States and December 6th I'm doing a webinar with um, Matt Allen from one of those banks that uh, he's going to go through um, from A to Z on non-recourse lending. Um, and then self-dealing prohibited transactions, so you wouldn't be able to purchase an island in the middle of the Pacific and decide that you want to have a family reunion there. That That is self-dealing and that is prohibited. Um, so the IRA LLC, um, that is what uh, Aaron and my case study he did he set up an IRA LLC um, so that um, the self-directed IRA purchases ownership in the LLC and then the LLC takes ownership of the asset so um, you know in many instances the IRA owner manages the LLC so the self-directed IRA sends the money to the IRA LLC then the IRA LLC buys the property, invests in the mortgage note, lends the funds, um, invests in another LLC. Um, so the IRA invests the money in the LLC bank account. So the, um, the IRA owner would open a bank account at Chase or Wells Fargo for that LLC. The IRA owner is the manager of the LLC. The LLC acquires the investment and the IRA owns the LLC 100%. So the IRA owner as the manager, um, they're limited as what they can and cannot do. So you can perform all the administrative and investment oversight tasks. You can receive the income from the property or the investment into the LLC checking account, sign checks to you know, pay utilities, the expenses, you could sign the investment contracts, all the documents at the closing, you can hire the contractors or the professionals, but you cannot pay yourself or any disqualified person any kind of compensation. You can't personally benefit from the LLC's investments. You certainly can't commingle your personal funds with the IRA's funds in an LLC bank account and you can't unfairly shift income to you or any disqualified person. So um, this is the prequel to Aaron's case study. This is what happened before or during when John was looking at investing with PCG. So John came to us looking to set up a beneficiary self-directed IRA. So he had a beneficiary IRA um, at Merrill and he wanted to um, transfer a portion of that money 
into a beneficiary self-directed IRA. So it was his father's IRA. He was the beneficiary. So he had a beneficiary IRA. You have a beneficiary self-directed IRA. So um, I had sent John our application documents with the requirement list as to what needed to be completed. Um, let him know that we needed the originals back into our office to open the account. Um, he was interested in using that beneficiary self-directed IRA to invest in real estate. Um, he wanted to open up an IRA LLC to use that to invest in the real estate that he was looking into. Um, IRA LLCs are set up uh, stricter than regular LLCs. Regular LLC, you can go on LegalZoom, you can set it all up yourself. Um, it spits out all of your documents that you need and it's nice and quick. But there's more requirements, stricter requirements with an IRA LLC. So um, we suggest that you have an attorney or an ERISA attorney. Um, an ERISA attorney would be familiar with retirement law, uh, familiar with self-directed IRAs, to have them set up the LLC, the operating agreement, so that um, you know it's set up properly and it complies with a self-directed IRA. So he did all that. Um, he opened up the self-directed IRA. We initiated the transfer of funds from Merrill Lynch on behalf of his self-directed IRA. Um, when he opened up his LLC, we uh, reviewed the transaction documentation that we were going to be moving his money from Next Generation Trust to his LLC bank account. So we had to review his LLC documentation, the operating agreement, articles of formation. We had to review all that, again, just for feasibility, not for legitimacy or anything else. So once we reviewed that, and our review period is two to five business days, um, we reviewed it, his transaction was processed, we moved his funds to his Chase LLC checking account, and then John was free to use those self-directed IRA funds to invest with People's Capital Group. Um, and so then once, um, you know, there'll come a time when John maybe he wants to transfer his IRA funds out of Next Generation. He wants to transfer them maybe back to Merrill or he's going to transfer them to a, a Schwab IRA. He's free to do that. Um, all of his, his net profit from investing with People's Capital Group will come back to his IRA LLC checking account. It has to come back to us when it comes back to us, then we, if he gives us a transfer out form that he wants to transfer back to Merrill, we will transfer those funds back to another IRA. Um, if he wanted to continue to invest until he retired, um, you know, then when you're 59 and a half, you can start to take distributions from your IRA. So there's a actuarial formula for calculating distributions. Uh, so, you know, we would be happy to do that if he wanted to continue to do it until he was 59, 65. Um, once you turn 70 and a half, you're required to take distributions. So, you know, we would be happy to do those for him as well. Um, but here's my contact information. There's our website, our phone numbers, my email, you have any questions about self-directed IRAs or, you know, how our whole case study worked, how it flowed, you know, um, it seems like we kind of simplified it, but it, 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 it wasn't something that happened overnight, um, but, you know, it, it did and it worked and, you know, it was, it was kind of nice that it did. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions. Wow, Aaron, we did a fabulous job. Nobody has any questions for us. <laughs> we either did really good or really bad, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're all sleeping out there. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. That made a lot of sense to me. I definitely understood that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody has any questions? Wow. 
I mean, I can unmute you all if you wanted me to. If you could, you know, if that's, if you think it's easier, I'll unmute you all. Uh, if you want to ask a question, feel free. You know, you don't have to type it anywhere. Just ask away. Oh, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Phil. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Karen. I do have a few questions, but I would prefer to send it to you in an email if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, let's see. Wait, ooh, there is a question. So uh, someone asked, just to be clear, the IRA owner is the company that manages your IRA? The IRA owner is the company that manages your IRA. Well, nobody really manages it. We're a third-party administrator. Um, you know, it is self-directed, so, you know, you need to do your, your own due diligence to figure out what you're investing in. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Karen, I, I have a question actually. <clears throat> I'm just curious um, kind of about the, the fees. I don't know if you want to get into it, but I, sure. I, I think, how does it work again? There's there's an initial fee to set up your account and then to, to move it, right? Right? Is that to come in and come out basically, right? And there's an annual fee as well? Right. So there's um, a $50 one-time account setup fee. And then we offer two fee options for the annual administrative fee. So the first one is $325 per year per asset. So if you were only looking to invest in one piece of real estate, $325 a year. So the $50 plus the $325 would be due at the time that you open the account with us. The second option for the annual administrative fee, we base it on your total account value. It's a laddered scale and it would be billed in monthly installments. Um, the choice is entirely up to you. If you're looking to do three, four, five different investments within a year, you might want to consider uh, option two based on just your total account value, not the number of assets that you're investing in. Um, also, if you are going to have funds wired in when you're transferring in, um, there's a norm, it's normally a $30 wire fee, but uh, right now we have a special going on until Thanksgiving where we're going to waive that $30 incoming wire fee. It doesn't matter if you're a current client or if you're a new client, we're going to waive that $30 fee for you until Thanksgiving. Um, when you make an investment, like I said, we have to do the administrative review on what you're investing in. There's a $100 transaction fee. So every time that we move your funds to an investment, it's $100. Plus, it's $5 if you want us to send a check to your investment or $30 if we're going to send a wire. So it's either $105 or $130 um, to move the money to an investment. There is no charge for your money to come back into the self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest benefits of uh, the LLC account for someone like uh, our case study, John here, he, when he actually did 200,000 into four different properties. So uh, it's obviously very affordable, you know, $300 to move your capital here is, is very affordable. And, um, I think what he what he was raving about was that he could not, then move it you know through your through your trust account to his LLC account and then into three or four different investment opportunities that might pay back that account at three or four different times and and he, he doesn't have to pay that that the fee every time because going back into his LLC account so right. it's a good system you know because they get to move it legally through your trust account and then of course. Um, if they are doing something where they're investing in multiple real estate opportunities, like uh, John was doing, then the LLC account makes sense, um, of course, in that case. So right. that's the reason yeah, the reason people do that, of course. Right. But he wouldn't have had to ha open an LLC to invest mm -hmm. with you guys. He could have just used the self-directed IRA and had us mm -hmm. just invest in that Jockey Hollow Road LLC. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he could have, you know, but then he would have, you know, depending on how many times he was going to invest, mm -hmm. you know, then it would have gotten a little bit more costly. But, um, you know, an IRA LLC is not always necessary. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Only if you're doing multiple right. investments at that after that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then it's more cost effective, you mm -hmm. know, to just have the one LLC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody else have any other questions? Crickets. <laughs> well, if nobody has any other questions, I, I want to thank everybody for um, joining us this evening. Um, I did record it. I will share the recording with Aaron. Um, the recording will be up on our website. If you miss something, if you join late and you wanted to view it again, um, you know, it's going to be up there for you so that you can enjoy it again and again. I want to thank you, Aaron, for joining us. It was great. It was a lot of great information. Thank you, Karen. Absolutely. I was glad to be here. You, I liked your presentation as well. I actually learned a lot from your presentation. <laughs> I, I was surprised. I was like, oh, another presentation about self-directing your IRA. But then I learned a lot. I was, <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Yeah, thank I got you. I'm impressed. So thanks for doing that. And, and thank you guys for attending here as well. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to get a copy of this. It's always nice to hear uh, how you sound on audio, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's fabulous. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Definitely. All right, have a good night. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.